Good morning, everyone. This is Larry Phillips, and I'm continuing to read in the book Poems for Edification, Volume um, 1 through 5, and this is part 8 of those readings. And I will be posting this on some of my platforms. Some of them are limited as to how long I can go, so I'm not sure how long this video is going to go today. I'm snowed in. Um, I can't get out. I have nothing other to do than to sit and read a bunch of poems. <laughs> so it shows you how colorful of a life I live being semi-retired. You know. This is entitled uh, We're Marching to Zion. We're marching to Zion and this march is led by God's dear son. I hope this is going to turn I hope this is going to be loud enough. I have sometimes problems with these um, videos coming out loud enough and I got the volume at this top level so I don't know why unless it's my internal mic but I got my internal mic you know turned all the way up so I'll try to speak up we're marching to Zion and this march is led by God's dear son this pilgrimage is not to a physical place but looking for the city the new Jerusalem Coming down out of heaven, prepared for the bride, this Zion's a place to eternally abide. Many try to make Zion a physical place where rejection of Christ is an utter disgrace. But I'm marching to Zion, a spiritual place. I don't believe in the um, rebuilding of the temple. I don't believe in reinstituting animal sacrifice or any of that. Jesus Christ has already entered once into the holy place. The next one is entitled, Many are the afflictions of God's people. Many are the afflictions of God's people, whether they be spiritual or physical, a test to the soul to bring us forth as gold. Tried in the fire of suffering and pain, Christ was victorious and our entrance did gain. Into eternal life of paradise and bliss, let those in afflictions always remember this. The next one is entitled Insurance. Car insurance, life insurance, health insurance too. The only real insurance is what Christ provides for you. If you're one of his people predestinated and blood-bought, freely pardoned and forgiven and by the Holy Spirit taught, the greatest insurance plan is eternal life which God gave his people before time began. The next one is entitled Entropy. False science promotes Darwin and evolution saying things are getting better and better. All we need to do is look at our physical constitution. When we see entropy and decay we look in the mirror and we see evolution is a lie. The earth is not evolving into something better. It will be destroyed by fire. The only thing that Christians have to look forward to is our heaven in heaven, where we will be, where there will be peace and bliss and rest for the forgiven. The next one is entitled, Thank You, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for giving me eternal life amid all this strife. When evil is so prevalent, you could cut it like a knife. When Satan and his minions mock me and say I'm doomed, I see your hands and feet and view the empty tomb. I can never thank you enough for dying in my stead. I have eternal life, not damnation instead. Well, the next one is entitled Master of the Sea. Christ awed the disciples when on the boat they saw the wind and tempest tossing and the raging of the sea. Then Christ said, Peace be still, and it became calm as could be. Who is this, they said, that even the wind and sea obey him, the creator of the universe who had come to earth as man? 
Yes, he was fully God, yet he was fully man, and he still holds the wind and sea in the palm of his almighty hand. The next one is entitled Rotten Fruit. Just like one bad apple will spoil the rest, we all fell in Adam, bringing death and distress. We are not just tainted by our and Adam's sin. No, Christ said you must be born again. We are rotten fruit to the very core, but through the merits of Christ's blood for his people, we are not dead anymore. How can a piece of rotten fruit be made whole again? Only through the blood of Christ and God's eternal plan. We are justified in him, we've been born again. The next one is entitled, Early in the Morning. <clears throat> I've got to have a cup, of, or I have to have a sip of coffee here. If you ever want something really good, have some coffee with some uh, coconut silk milk as your cream. It's pretty good. Early in the morning. I have found early in the morning is the best time to commune with God. When I'm not bothered by the noise of all the crowd. When my thoughts are centered on Him and His precious word. When outside I hear the chirping of the birds. When I see the beautiful sunrise and hear the gentle breeze. It gives me the calm assurance that Christ did His Father please. When He died for me. Yes, it's early in the morning when I can praise Him and thank my Heavenly Father for setting me free. Well, the next one is entitled, Not My Choice. Not My Choice. It was not my choice that Christ should die for such a wretched, worthless worm as I. It was not my choice that His Father would choose me to be predestinated into adoption for eternity. It was not my choice that Christ would show me love and leave the ivory palaces from his kingdom from above. It was not my choice nor my will, but Christ that showed mercy, and he did fulfill all that his Father required. Christ said, Peace be still. So the next time you hear someone promoting the doctrine of free will, just smile and say, It was not my choice, but God chose me before I was born from eternity to fulfill his perfect will. The next one is entitled, Everything's Not Coming Up Roses. Some people have a distorted view of the world. Everything's coming up roses. They are in the Optimist Club. They deny sin and evil and the fall of man, and concoct a false reality, and in deception exalt Satan. Even when the roses come up, they are full of thorns, such is life in this world of sin. Christ suffered grievously and was the rose of Sharon. The word of God tells us that if we are in Christ, we will suffer persecution. So if you think everything's coming up roses, you may not be the recipient of salvation. The next one is entitled Courage. We are often exhorted by others to be encouraged. Where does courage and encouragement come from? It certainly does not come from us. Encouragement comes from the source of all things, and in Christ we should only trust. If we trust in ourselves to keep ourselves encouraged, we will ultimately only be discouraged. For in Him we live and move and have our very being. So our Creator and Redeemer Savior will our encouragement bring. The next one is entitled, Higher Than the Mountains. I live in the beautiful Ozark Mountains where God's beauty is displayed. In all his finest majesty, God's colors are arrayed. David said, I looked under the hills from my strength cometh from God. He's higher than the mountains, but he created them to show us a picture of the Godhead. Through his creation, we can see him. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Well, the next one is entitled, Where Sin Abounded. Forgetting those things of the past and remembering what Christ daily does, has done, where sin abounded, grace much more abounded for us. What a wonderful thing to think on when we remember our former sins. 
Grace is much more abounding for those who have been born again. He has cast all our sins as far as the east is from the west. This will stand up against the devil's accusations against us. This will always pass the test. What a wonderful thing to always remember that even though Satan is the great accuser of the brethren, grace is more abounding, assuring us a place in heaven. The next one is entitled, The Gospel is Not for Sale. The gospel is not for sale, no, it has never been. Though many have tried to sell it, that is man's religion. The gospel is glad tidings to God's people, freely given to us by him, not a used car that you bid on at an auction. Many have tried to hawk the gospel, but God tells us in his word, you can't sell it because God paid for it with his own blood. <coughs> next one is entitled singleness of purpose the apostle paul's focus was on christ and him crucified he told this beautiful story until they killed him and he died this should be our focus for our remaining days to tell the wondrous story how christ came to save it's easy to get off track and focus on other things like baptism and fellowship dinners and how the choir sings but there's nothing more important that the Christian should do than proclaiming that Christ was crucified to the world too. We cannot add to or subtract from the bride of Christ, but preaching the gospel like Paul should for us suffice. So let's not pretend we're proclaiming, we are proclaiming Christ and him crucified when we're never telling the world that for sinners he did die. Worthy is the lamb to receive glory, honor, and power. Christ has put all things under his feet. Praise God for the mercy seat, or Satan would God's people devour. To think that Christ sits in glory interceding for me should give me enough reason to praise and honor the Son, for dying on the cross the work of salvation is done. Well, I'm going to stop there for now because I'm limited on some of my platforms to 15 minutes, and we've gone 12 minutes and 19 seconds. So um, this is a uh, reading... This will be, I believe, reading number eight or nine. I'll check and label it appropriately. And we'll continue later. God bless.